Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I want you to stand for the reading of God's word, and we're going to do something this morning that is... <clears throat> is going to be different. Um, if we can go to our message slides, the first one is a prayer confession that I want us this first Sunday of the new year to begin and to share together. It is a scripture that is found in Psalms 119 and 18. And right now, would you simply just lift a right hand toward heaven and would you repeat after me, open my eyes that I might receive wonderful words from your law. Would you repeat that again? Open my eyes that I might receive wonderful words from your law. Our scripture text is found in Matthew's gospel, chapter 11, 28 through 30. And we find these words of Jesus where he says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn for, from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Would you connect with someone and pray with me in this moment? Father God, please touch our time together as we continue our worship focusing on Jesus, the only one who is worthy of praise. Please make our hearts sensitive to the guidance and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Give us fresh perspective about going deeper with you in 2023 than we've ever walked with you before. May the attitude of our hearts during this new year be Christ and the kingdom and others and not ourselves. May we hunger and thirst for righteousness, just as Jesus taught us to be, that we might be filled. I pray for the person, perhaps in this room, or one who is watching, who has never trusted in Christ and repented of their sins. Oh God, would you save them today? For the rest of us who are professing believers, please help us to be wise followers of your teaching and to love you with all of our heart spirit of the living god to rescue us from ourselves rescue us from the world rescue us from the enemy of our soul and minister truth as only you can in the wonderful name of jesus we pray and everybody say amen and amen. God bless you as you're taking your seats. Amen. I am not a big fan of New Year's resolutions. If you are, that's okay. I hope it works out for you. But through the years, I have learned, and I'm honest when I say this, that this approach has not worked for me. One person said this, the only resolution I might come close to succeeding in is this one. In 2023, I'm going to eat more and exercise less. <laughs> of course, they were just kidding. And brothers and sisters, I believe that we all need to be health conscious in all areas. But in doing so, at New Year's, we have the tendency of making plans and promises that we just don't keep. If you don't believe this, why don't you make a trip to the gym this week and then do a follow-up visit in February and see if there's any difference. You see, we make resolution plans and promises at times that we just don't meet 
most, mostly because that they, they are not reasonable and they are not attainable. Please do not say, I'm going to read 40 chapters of the Bible every day during 2023 because you won't. I'm sorry to tell you, you won't. Please don't say, I'm going to pray four hours a day because you won't. Please don't say, I'm going to go to the gym five days a week because you'll let yourself down. New Year's resolutions, I am not a fan. You may be, I'm not. Nope, I am not a fan of New Year's resolutions. But I do believe that there is, ask, there is value in asking God to speak a word over our life for the new year. And I want to give you the personal word that God has spoken to my heart for 2023, are you ready for it? Now this is my word, doesn't have to be yours, this is my word, and that word is unhurried. Unhurried means to respond calmly, to relax and be at peace, to be unhurried. And I believe that it's backed up by the scripture that we have read together this morning. Again, Jesus said this, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus here is communicating rest and relaxation and living an unhurried life. Isn't this inviting and glorious a word from the Lord? Isn't it a wonderful word from Jesus found right there in our scripture text? Here's a question for us. Are you tired? Look at your neighbor, say, are you tired? Are you tired? Are you burdened? Are you sick of pushing and fighting in your own strength? Well, if we are, what we need to do is get yoked to, to Jesus. <laughs> Come and connect with Jesus, brothers and just sisters, because Jesus is the one who will give us rest. If we come to him, Jesus will help us achieve more than we ever thought possible. Here's a true statement. We can do more with Jesus than we can ever hope to do on our own, all because of his grace and his rest and his joy. Listen, in the last month, I have been fascinated with the National Geographic series, Life Below Zero, Next Generation. Now, we lived in Alaska for four years, and I have experienced uh, 50 degrees plus below zero. I have been all the way up to Point Barrow, Alaska, the, the highest point that you can go in the world. I have stuck my hand in the Arctic Ocean. I went there with the intent of jumping in and getting my polar bear certificate, but my mama did not raise a fool, y'all. But I've been fascinated with this series. And one thing that I saw just a couple of weeks ago was that there are different approaches that this next generation of Alaskans are taking. For example, when, uh, when some of them go ice fix, fi, uh, fishing, they will take an ax and they will try their best to dig a hole in the ice while there are others who will take an electric auger and that thing will zip right down through the ice and open up a hole so that they can go fishing. Also notice that there were those who took an ax and tried to fell trees while others would take a chainsaw and cut them down. Give me the auger and give me the chainsaw, y'all. Because here's a true statement. When we are working with the right power source, we can accomplish more than we can in our own strength. Come on, somebody. Jesus says, come to me, 
unhurried, really, pastor? That's your word, lost people are dying and going to hell all around us and you're saying you're gonna be unhurried, you should be ashamed of yourself. Don't you know that we're running out of time? Shouldn't your word be hurry up instead of unhurried? Well, let's take a few moments and look at the Bible context leading up to what Jesus said right here. What is Jesus doing prior to Matthew's gospel 11 and 28? This is so good. Let me sketch for us very quickly and attempt to give you a picture of why a spirit of unhurriedness and rest is so important in our life. Jesus, you got to go back to Matthew's gospel chapter five. He preaches the sermon on the mount there, the greatest, most famous sermon ever preached. And immediately after this sermon, Jesus starts healing lepers. He heals a woman with a blood disease. He heals the centurion's servant. He even heals Peter's mother-in-law. Jesus also raises a young girl from the dead back to life. He, before he says the words there in chapter 11, He calms the storm. He casts out demons. Jesus is walking continually doing miracles and deliverances. And while he is doing all of these wonderful things, he is also training the disciples. He is already called and calling us others who were unlikely. People like Matthew, a tax collector. He made the list. Can you believe that? And Jesus spends time pouring into his disciples. In Matthew 9, he talks about the ripened harvest. But he also talks about the lack of willing workers. So those who he has called, he now commissions to go forth and minister in his name. But with the calling, he also gives them the cost. He tells them, as you go, know this that you will be persecuted. Come on, somebody. He says you will be like sheep going out among wolves. He lets them know that following him is going to be hard. The the world's going to hate you, but also the devil is going to despise you. But then he says, do not fear because God knows every time a sparrow falls and God the Father knows every hair, the number of every hair that is on your head. So go in my name, Jesus says, but remember, whoever doesn't take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Later, Jesus rebukes the unresponsive and the apathetic and also the towns where he ministered where he was not received. He said, woe to you, Chorazin and Bethsaida. If Tyre and Sidon had seen what you saw, they'd had repented Immediately, Come on, somebody. See, Jesus is teaching that the more knowledge you have of God's revelation, the greater the responsibility you have to obey. Here's the point. Always remember, brothers and sisters, in this new year, exposure to the gospel is tied to personal responsibility. I want to tell you, we are blessed today to be able to come and worship here together in freedom. And we are blessed to receive the word of God each and every time we come. We are blessed to pick up our Bibles every day. In fact, we have a reading plan that will enable you to take five minutes a day and read through the New Testament this year. That's achievable for everybody. Look at somebody say, you've got five minutes to give to Jesus. You got five minutes to give to Jesus. But remember this, the exposure to the word and the exposure to the truth and the exposure to the gospel is tied to personal accountability. Now let me summarize it this way. Put it in the simplest terms I can. Jesus is basically basically saying this. He wants his kingdom to be the top priority of our lives. If you believe that, say amen. His kingdom cares about the sick. 
His kingdom cares about the weak and the overlooked. The precious ones are the focus of Jesus' ministry. And at the same time, brothers and sisters following Christ, it's going to be hard. But following him will be worth it. Needy people are everywhere. And our job is to connect needy people with Jesus. But as we go about doing this, the devil is going to fire off some painful darts at us. So what are we to do as disciples? We are to come to Jesus. We are to come to Jesus and get linked up with him, yoked up to him. Brothers and sisters, we must come to the Lord. Amen? Again, are you tired? Are you burdened? Well, here's the good news. Jesus wants to teach us. He wants to help us, guide us, and bless us. And he wants to give us rest. Christ Jesus, our Savior, is the only one who's able to do that for us. I can't do it for you. You can't do it for yourself. Jesus is the only one. There's two imperatives I want to give us quickly that we find in our text First is that we must come to Christ. We must come to Christ. We must come to Jesus to be saved. If you believe that, say amen. He's the only way. He's the only way to God. He is the way, truth, and life. We must come to him to be saved. Do you remember when the Lord saved you? You remember that occasion, how precious it was? We must come to Jesus to be saved. We also must come to him daily for personal sanctification. The truth is, every day we need the Lord. In every situation, we need him. It is the Lord's presence in our life day by day that makes us holy because without Christ, we can do nothing. He is the vine and we are the branches. So we must come to him daily for personal sanctification. We must also come to him when we're weary and when we're burdened. Brothers and sisters, this culture that we are living in is a rat race. The pace that we are all moving at is one that's very, very, very busy. Everyone in this room, you have several hats that you wear. None of us only have one hat that we wear. I am a father. I am a husband. I am a pastor. I am a manager. Lately, I have been a general contractor here at Eastway. There's a lot of hats that we all wear, but we've got to come to the Lord when we are weary and when we are tired. We are consumed every day by busyness and it's not going away. So we had better learn how to rest in the midst of it. Come on, somebody. Are you burdened? Has life been heavy for you lately? Jesus wants you to come to him, and here is why. He loves you. Amen. Amen. He's available and accessible to us 24-7. Why? Because the veil in the temple has been rent in twain. He is accessible to us. He has got sufficient grace. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, he said, My grace is sufficient for thee. He's got our daily provision. My God shall supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. He is the water of life according to John chapter four. He has a plan, a great plan for every day, every situation, and every season that we find ourselves in. This is always true for every child of God. Listen, the best life now is our life wrapped up in God's plan. The worst mistake is for us to run away from God's plan for our life. So we've got to come to him. Come to him for salvation. Come to him for sanctification. Come to him when we're weary and when we're tired. We first must come. Secondly, we must be yoked, tied. We must be hitched to Christ. 
The terminology that we find here that Jesus is using is from an ancient agricultural method where farmers would often train younger oxen, listen, by yoking them or tying them to the older, more experienced oxen. Why? Because the older oxen were stronger and wiser and knew the way. This is how the younger animals learn. Sadly, during Jesus' ministry and during a time where he is inviting us to come and to take his yoke, literally to yoke up with him so that he might teach us and guide us. How many of you realize that Jesus is stronger than you are? And we are the weaker ones. But when we yoke with him, he is the one who teaches us and trains us and disciples us. Well, unfortunately, sadly, the religious leaders of Jesus' day didn't truly help people. The Pharisees flaunted themselves as being superior to everyone else. If someone was caught in sin, they were judged by the religious establishment. Pharisees weren't helping. They just condemned, notice, the immature. Because here it is, their heads were full of knowledge, but their hearts were empty of compassion. Come on, somebody. The Pharisees were religious and pious. They were the elitists who stressed religion. But here's what you gotta understand. Religion sets no one free. But relationship with Jesus changes everything. You see, religion stresses all of the do's and don'ts, but relationship emphasizes what Jesus has already done. The old song says, give me that old time religion. And some of you remember that song and you might not even like it, but I wanna bring something to your, your attention. Not one time in that song is the name of Jesus mentioned. I don't want just old time religion. I don't want just a list of do's and don'ts. Give me relationship with Jesus because in having relationship with him, I'll have everything that I need. Come on somebody. See, we have so much more than religion. We have relationship with Jesus. And he says to us that his yoke is easy. The yoke of sin is not easy. The yoke of sin is not easy. It will lead you down paths that will break your heart and destroy your life. But if you'll come to Jesus and believe in his sacrifice and get connected with him, he'll teach you, he'll love you, he'll train you, he'll help you, he'll be there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. He's there for you. Call upon his name today. Amen. He said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Brothers and sisters, what is hard for us, can I tell you, is not hard for Jesus. Struggles in marriage are easier to face when we are yoked up with Jesus. Students struggling in school, school becomes easier when you're connected with Jesus. Work is hard, y'all, and hard work is good, but work is more fulfilling when we are connected and yoked with Jesus. Parenting is difficult, but Jesus can help us when we are yoked with him. When we don't know what to do, Jesus knows. All we have to do is go to him, go to him. Come constantly to him, live connected with him, and in the midst of everything, he will give us rest. So listen, when I say, if you're still with me, say amen. amen. When I say the word that God has spoken over my life is unhurried, the word unhurried, here's what I mean. In 2023, I plan as I have in previous years. But again, I plan to give every day to Jesus. 
I plan to give every moment. I plan to give this year to Jesus. From early every morning until exhaustion in the evenings, I plan to be entirely open and in fellowship with the Spirit of God and his divine agenda for my life. And if we will do this, then from a place of rest, God will show his strength in our lives. Now let me be clear. When I say my word is unhurried, which in context means to to rest and relax, I do not mean a lack of focus or a lack of urgency. I realize the times that we're living in. We're living in urgent times. Nor do I mean slow or lagging. To the contrary, unhurried to me reminds me of my great need to abide with Jesus, to rest in him. And as we read earlier, Isaiah, I just love it. Kim and I, sometimes we don't discuss responsive reading. But in in my message, in my study this week, I was reminded of what Isaiah said in Isaiah 40 and verse 29 to 31. He gives strength to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Youth may become weary and young men may stumble and fall, but those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. How many of y'all have ever heard the little statement, I'm sure Bryce has, running around like a chicken with your head cut off. (laughs) Y'all really don't know the background of that. Some of you know it. I've experienced it. I've seen it with my eyes. My, My grandmother, Tucker, who was a little bit taller than me, she was a big lady. She was a Choctaw Indian, full-blooded. She could lay it on you, y'all. But I witnessed what that cliche means. But have you ever found yourself just running around, hectic and in a hurry? I've lived that the first year and a half of my tenure here. But I'm telling you this morning before God, before a viewing audience, I love you, but your pastor has learned that I have got to pace myself. And when God gave me that word, Don, unhurried, and revealed to me that scripture, and he said, if you will just come to me, run to me and yoke up with me, that burden that you're carrying that's heavy just shifted on over on, and I've done that, but shifted on over afresh and anew. So what I'm committing to you is I'm gonna stay in the race. I'm gonna keep running. I'm gonna keep serving God. I'm gonna keep serving this church. But I'm gonna tell you this, I'm gonna trust God for his strength because it's only in his strength that any of us are gonna be able to accomplish anything of eternal worth and value. So here's what I want us to do. I want you to stand all over this building. First Sunday of January, I wanna lead us in some personal words of prayer and application for this new year. Would you repeat these words after me? They will not be on the screen, so listen very closely. God, help me to be busy, but not in a hurry. We gotta say that one again. God, help me to be busy, but not in a hurry. My life isn't about a few hours on Sunday. It's about living for you every day. I'm not in a sprint. I'm in a marathon. I'm in this for the long haul. My private time with the Lord in prayer and in worship is going to be unhurried. 
My personal time with my family is going to be unhurried. My time in ministry at Eastway is going to be unhurried. Now listen closely, say this. The only time I want to be in a hurry this year is to run to Jesus and to obey him completely. Thank you, Jesus. Unhurried. Unhurried in our prayer. Unhurried in our worship. Unhurried in our time with our family. Unhurried here in ministry. Kim, we're going to live this, this year. Mickey, yes, sir. all team members, this year, we're going to live unhurried. Dana, I commit to you my, the love of my life here on earth. I commit to you that I'm going to live unhurried during 2023. My time with you is going to be unhurried because you matter to me. You matter to me. You might say, well, pastor, we need you here at the church. Yes, and I need you. We need each other. Before God instituted the church, he ordained the family. So brothers and sisters, your family matters. Men, I wanna to speak to you right now. You are the earners. Many of you are working hard and you're working long hours. But this year, make it up in your mind that your family matters and you're gonna spend time with them and you're not gonna be in a hurry. You're gonna live unhurried with them. Unhurried. I proclaim that over, unhurried. Amen. Come on, somebody. Take somebody by the hand right now or lay your hand on their shoulder. Pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, this word right now that we have shared. God, we have heard from you, Jesus, your words to us to come, to abide with you, to yoke and get connected and tied and tethered with you, to shift the load over on you, to find rest in you. Oh God, 2023, I believe, is gonna be a great year here at Eastway. God, it's already started. I sense it in my spirit. I proclaim that there is a harvest that is gonna be reaped. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for the plans that you have for us. God, give us discerning hearts. Give us understanding. Give us a hunger and a thirst to be in your presence. And Lord, there not to, to be in a hurry, but to tarry, to receive the strength. God, not to run around like Martha, but to be like Mary who chose the better part, to sit at the feet of Jesus. The only way that we're gonna have strength to do what must be done in this new year is if we come to you and we are yoked with you, Jesus. Thank you for this word you have spoken over my life. And for those who will embrace this, God, bless them, I pray. Bless those who are watching. Lord, I pray that you will expand our horizons during 2023. Lord, that you'll give us creativity, Father. Lord, that you'll touch us as we're continuing to put things in order here. God, not just in a building, but within the body. Lord, thank you for those who are gonna be enlisting in areas of ministry, oh God, to, to get under and to begin to shoulder the load. The, the ministry that you have for us is great. And this city, oh Lord, the, the opportunity, the harvest is ripened. Lord, I pray that you will touch us. God, give us a hunger and a thirst for your word every day, God. And when we open the Holy Scriptures, we will read them, not just to place a check mark in a box or to conquer the Bible saying we have read it, but to truly hear from you every single day. Lord, thank you. Thank you. 
God, if there's someone, as I prayed early, if there's someone here in this building this morning who is yet to believe on your sacrifice, Jesus, and call upon your name for forgiveness of sin, I pray that in this moment that your Holy Spirit will draw them, will tug them, will pull them in, and they'll realize that Jesus is their answer. Those who will be watching, God, those who have stayed to the very end of this message, the greatest thing that can be said today is that yes, Jesus loves you. He gave his life for you. He wants you and his family. All you've got to do is believe and accept what he's done already. And you can be saved. Lord, let it be in the name of Jesus. Father, now we also pray once again, see old Brassfield, continue to touch him. Mary Bibb, God, I pray that you will touch her. Lord, she has found out devastating news, but her spirit is trusting you. She's still joyful. I pray, oh God, as she's going through the, as she's going through chemotherapy and surgery, I pray that you will touch her and bring her through to the other side. Desperate, desperate need, but we believe you for it. God, we pray for Gates of Heaven Church as they're getting ready to launch on campus with us. Those who will be coming out Tuesday morning at nine, joining with us as we're rededicating this campus to Jesus, walking around this building, praying for this property, but also this community, that you will touch our hearts and knit us together in a partnership with this Hispanic work so that we might together reap a harvest in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We give you all praise. And everyone say amen. 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 I believe 2023 is gonna be a great year. If you believe that, say amen. amen. In fact, if you believe that, join me in giving the Lord a hand of praise and expectation. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, next Sunday is Vision Sunday. We'll be talking about uh, the meaning of why God calls us a church. We also have a special guest who's gonna be with us to share briefly a testimony, uh, but also lead us in a prayer. Uh, the following Sunday, I just put you on notice, a two-week notice that we, at the close of service, we will have a called conference. I will have a report for you of all of the work that has been done since the last time that we met. To God be the glory for providing for us the means by which we're able to do what we've done. But just keep that in mind. Also, watch your bulletins. We are going into a planning session for 2023. We're gonna lay out the year and activities for, uh, for our senior adults as well as young people. And, and so we're excited about that. God bless you in the name of Jesus and give you an awesome week. And again, happy new year. We love you. God bless you in Jesus' name, amen.